Gude and welcome to this video, where I will show you the first steps on Mycroft's Mark II Voice Assistant Unit and try to answer the question, is the Mark II the better Amazon Alexa due private or privacy reasons? And I will show you possibilities how you might be able to create your own Mark II unit using your own 3D printer. But first of all, let me say a big thank you to Nian AI for providing me with this special unit. And before starting with today's topic, I would like to give our special guest the chance to introduce itself. Hey Nian. Who are you? My name is Nian AI. I am an artificial intelligence personal assistant capable of conversation and learning new skills. Thank you. And now let's go. Before working with the actual Mark II, let's start by taking a look to the history and the current work in progress on the community side. So for that, let's start with the originally initiated by Mycroft AI company Kickstarter campaign some years ago. The company, so Mycroft AI, is now out of service, but the product and community has been taken over by Neon AI and partnered with Open Voice OS. I'll put links to both of them in the description box below. And as you might see on the first view, there has been a huge change in design between the original Kickstarter campaign design and the final product here. But let's take a look to the technical specifications of a Mycroft Mark II unit. And for that, let's hop on to Mycroft's product page. As you can see by the price tag, the Mark II unit costs $399, which is, in my case, really expensive compared to, let's say, an Amazon Alexa smart speaker on sale. But if you count in the privacy aspects, it is still expensive. But let's hop on to the technical specifications so we can see some dimensions. It is driven by a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigabytes of memory, has Wi-Fi uh, on board, physical gigabit Ethernet, USB ports, a touch screen, sound, and what's, <laughs> what's obviously important for a voice assistant, we have a room compatible two-way microphone array with hardware accelerated noise cancelling. And the Mark II unit brings a 5 megapixel camera on board. And uh, for the next information, let's go to Neon AI. This is uh, the partnership from Mycroft AI, which have mainly taken over community and shipping processes and uh, stuff like that. And uh, you can see a special menu item for the Mark II. And um, you can buy it here. As you can see here, buy your Mark II unit. You can download Neon OS as the operating system for the Mark II here. And you can bring this download on an SSD disk, which is delivered uh, as, I guess, 256 gigabytes of SSD comes with the unit itself. Uh, or you can uh, burn the image using typical image uh, program uh, on a normal USB drive. Let's take a quick view to the way to buy Mark II. So let's click buy Mark II, go on this side, and you can see the price is still $399 as, it had been, as it's been mentioned on the Mark II page. And you can see some information here. So it's the Raspberry Pi 4 processor with that room compatible microphone. So, but please feel free to check out the uh, Neon AI pages for more information. Before taking a closer look to the Mark II device itself, let's uh, just go to this open source tab and you can see there is a partnership between Open Voice OS and Neon AI. So you can check the Open Voice OS project community pages too. As I've mentioned, I'll put links to all of these sites pages in the description box below. If you think hmm, $399 for Raspberry Pi with touchscreen and room-enabled microphone is still expensive and you have access to a 3D printer, I can show you maybe an alternative on how you construct and print your own case and build your own Mark II unit. So thanks to the open source philosophy of Mycroft AI, they provided lots of assembly information and schema uh, open source. So for that, let's go to their GitHub repository. 
so uh, Mycroft AI Hardware Mark II. And you can see the open hardware principles. So copy our designs, build your own Micro, build your own Mycroft Mark II Raspberry Pi edition and so on. And you can go to the Mark II production folder, for example, and you will find assembly instructions and lots of useful information that can help you to create and build and print your own Mark II unit. But now let's take a closer look to the unit itself. To show you the unit, I've created an impressively improvised construction using my mobile phone and to give you hopefully a better perspective on the device, but sorry for the maybe not optimal image quality. And as you can see, this is the top side. Well, let's move the microphone a little bit with me. This is the top side of um, the Mark II unit. We have uh, a button to decrease, increase the volume and to disable the microphone, which will be also indicated by this LED ring here in the middle. So if I disable the microphone by switching this slider, you can see by this red light uh, LED button, now the microphone is disabled and you can enable it again. And we have this big button in the middle, um, which can skip the actual wake word. So a wake word is this key phrase that will activate your voice assistant and listen for the actual request. In the case of Amazon product, this is Alexa. Um, in the case of uh, the Mark II unit, the activation words have been printed here. And if you would like to skip wait word activation and just speak the actual request, you can just click this button and speak the actual request. What time is it? It's 5.02. And we have this additional slider on the top side, which will hide the camera lens. So now the camera lens, if you would like to use the camera, uh, is hidden and we can move away. And now the actual camera lens is visible. And uh, let's move it back again. Now the camera lens is hidden. The front view is mainly the touch screen with a menu which can uh, slide in and slide out. Let's take a look to the back side of the Mark II unit. We have the power connector, we have some GPIO pins, we have the physical network connector and we have four USB ports. And I've connected my um, Mark II Neon AI uh, SSD drive on the back side, but alternatively you can use any USB stick with a flashed image you have downloaded from the AI web page. And now let's go and take a look to the main menu and its functionalities. Before giving the Mark II menu a closer look, please give this video a thumb up if you like it and subscribe to my channel if you like my content in general. And please let me know in the comments on what you think on this video, the Mark II unit itself and which type of content you would like to see on this channel, Mark II related or not. And in general, thank you all for your great support. And now let's take a closer look to the menu of Mycroft's Mark II device. Sorry for the not optimal image quality, but I hope you get the point. So let's take the microphone with me. And um, you can see when you slide, or well, let's go back, when you use your finger to slide down the menu. You can increase the brightness and uh, adjust the volume and you have buttons to go back to the home screen. You can enable the Wi-Fi mode. You can rotate the display. Not sure what this is really for, but please let me know in the comments if you have any idea if you would like to use or to operate the Mark II unit on the side. So just for the fun, let's go and rotate it. So now it's left or right sided. Uh, let's make it bottom up. And bring it back to normal. So, honestly, I'm not sure what this is meant to be, but let me know if you have any idea. You can mute the microphone as you can also do it with that hardware button on the upper side and 
maybe one of the most interesting possibilities, apart from shutting down or reboot uh, several services on the device, um, is you can adjust the settings. And due to my personal perspective, I guess the Mycroft Mark II unit is, at least by now, not an easy end-user compatible replacement um, for an Amazon Alexa device. It is a great device to play around with if you are a technical enthusiast, if you are willing to dive into the topics, but if you are searching for a one-on-one -on -one replacement with the full feature set of an Amazon Alexa smart speaker, by now, in my personal opinion, the Mark II unit is not yet at this point. But if you like devices to hack on or to tinker with, this might be really a cool gadget. So let's go to the settings tab here. And we can adjust home screen settings, customize color schema, uh, change uh, display settings. And great thing about the Mark II, you can simply enable SSH so you connect on the Mark II unit and have full operating access. You can edit all the configuration files. You can see software package installations and lots of cool stuff. Uh, developer settings, as I've said, I guess by now, the primary target group are developers or technical enthusiasts, not really end users. You can restore factory settings and you can get information, version information on the device. But let's start from the upper side, so home screen settings. Nothing special here, so time and date settings and you can change the background settings. Go back, customize can adjust the color scheme. Right now it's the green version. Let's change to the blue. Minecraft color scheme here. Go back. And now we have it changed to the blue version. No, let's first of all use display. You can change the wallpaper, so you bring in some variations for the wallpaper. You can dim the display automatically uh, if the Mark II unit is not actively used. This might be really helpful if it's in the bedroom or in a dark environment, um, night mode and stuff like this. You can simply enable SSH or disable SSH by clicking one of the two options buttons here. I already have activated SSH on my personal Mark II unit. So let's skip this and go to the developer settings. You can use an open voice OS dashboard to control various services. Let's just go back to the advanced settings. And here you can see all the components that are typically needed or required to operate a voice assistant. STT, so speech to text, text to speech, um, language settings, audio uh, stuff, listener, hot words, the various skills, so the actual features your voice assistant can handle. And all of this type, so lots of configuration possibilities here. Let's go to TTS and um, you can adjust things by this UI or you can use your SSH access to go into the YAML, the configuration files and edit all the parameters on the command line as I show you in a second. I hope this gives you a little idea on the possibilities on the user interface. And now let's use SSH to connect to the system itself. So for this I will use uh, an SSH client. I'm going to use PuDy or PuDy for this, but every SSH connection will work. So just use port 22 to connect to the IP address you probably get from your router uh, to connect to your instance by username Nian. And the password can be taken from the Nian AI documentation. You have to change the default password on your first login. And once you have done this, you can simply log into your device. And as you can see by this VN in the brackets before the actual user and pass name, by default, you are using a Python virtual environment. 
And as I've mentioned in lots of my other videos, um, you can use the pip list command to see a list of all installed Python packages in that special virtual environment. And here you can see uh, Wikipedia API, for example, this probably belongs to a skill. Um, we have lots of open voice OS skills and Neon skills. But please let me know in the comments if you would like me to make a video showing more command line possibilities on the mark to unit using Neon AI. And um, last but not least, let's take a look to one configuration file where you can adjust values. So I'm using my editor and let's edit etc Neon and then we have this Neon Jumel file. And if we open this, we can see lots of parameters as I've shown you on the user interface, such as the text to speech configuration, the STT, so the speech to text configuration. And here you can adjust multiple values. But this should be just one possible way to edit the configuration. Is this little device here, so is Mycroft's Mark II unit the better Amazon Alexa, due private or privacy reasons. In my honest opinion, it is a great device to hack on, to tinker with, to play on the command line for technical enthusiasts. It offers great possibilities to play with. But uh, as a replacement, as a simple replacement for an average user who would like to remove their Amazon Alexa or other commercial um, voice assistant speakers, um, this is not yet, in my opinion, the point. But it has great potential and I'm really excited to see where the way of Mycroft's Mark II device Neen AI Open Voice OS will go. And again, I'll put all the links in the description box below. So please check out all the pages and um, give this video a thumb up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done already. And thank you all for your great support. I wish you all a nice rest of the day. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.